Hello guys and welcome back to the HJW Gaming channel and the start of a brand new series for me. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Witch King, breaking down what makes him strong and the standard builds for him and then devising what the suitable counters are for him in order to help you improve your matchup against the Witch King if you end up facing off against him in war. I really hope you enjoy. So first up, we're going to take a look at what makes up the core of a Witch King's skill build and discuss what buffs he gives to his armies to therefore show exactly what it is that makes the Witch King so strong. So as you can see here, this is the base of a Witch King skill build. If we start with this bottom Respect Zero skill tree, this begins with Black Captain. As you can see here, what Black Captain does is it increases the damage dealt by enemy evil units by up to 30%. On top of that though, it also increases their HP by 2%. So this skill alone massively boosts the damage of evil units and also increases their survivability by boosting their HP. If we look at the first sub skill, Morgul Commander, this again helps to boost the evil survivability, but this time is focused specifically on Orc and Urukai units. A flat 14% damage reduction for these units isn't insignificant and it very much helps keep them alive in the battle. Now the last Respect Zero sub skill is possibly uh, the Witch King's most important skill and that is Convener. So what Convener gives you is for the first two rounds you always gain initiative which means that the Witch King's units act first in every round provided that the opposing commander and units don't also have, have initiative in which case the units or commander with the most speed then will act first. But assuming that, the, that you don't have initiative, this means that the Witch King will act first in those first two rounds. On top of this, they also gain a 75% chance to gain follow-up each round. Assuming that this procs on both rounds, which it has a high chance of doing so, this essentially means that your opponent's units will be attacking twice and attacking first for those first two rounds, meaning they get an enormous amount of burst damage dealt in those first two rounds ahead of your units so they can massively cut down the number of units that you have prior to attacking their units which gives them a massive advantage. Now if we take a look at the Respect 3 skill tree the first one of these skills is Ring Wraith. What Ring Wraith does is it makes all of your units facing off against the Witch King have an increased burn, poison and focus damage received by 30%. This essentially means that if they're dealing this type of damage they're going to have a massive boost to that amount of damage taken. And lastly on the Respect 3 skill tree you have Nazgul Screech. What Nazgul Screech does is in the first round it deals a 100% chance of inflicting stun. So for that first round, bear in mind when you consider that with Convener which 75% chance of, of proccing will mean that they hit you twice, if you're also stunned as well you're not going to attack and you're going to get hit twice and then if it procs in the second round convener you then get hit twice again meaning you've taken four hits before your units are even capable of attacking so this stun is very very important for the witch king's um, strategy on top of that it also inflicts a small amount of uh, focus damage each round though this is fairly insignificant and the stun is the more important thing to focus on here Equipment wise, a Witch King will usually be focused on increasing the damage of its melee units. So primarily it will be focused on the weapon using either a Reckoning with Might of Soldiers or a Cutlass with Melee Might. The rest of the equipment will usually be focused on keeping these melee units alive and sometimes also including an accessory that has Pursuit specifically to target other commanders that Witch King can struggle with. Troop wise, the main troop that you need to focus on is the Alchemist. The Alchemist forms 99% of the Witch King's build and damage. The reason for this is, whilst initially looking just like a siege unit with relatively low damage, the Alchemist has an ability called Fires of Orthanc which allows for its normal attack damage to actually deal 300% burn damage. When you consider this combined with uh, the relative skills of Witch King that I described earlier, such as the increased amount of burn damage dealt due to Ring Wraith and also Convener, meaning that it can hit twice, 
and combine it with that Nazgul Screech, meaning that they'll hit potentially four times before you get an attack, means that you take an enormous amount of early round burst fire damage. In addition to this, one little known fact is that fire damage actually circumvents the defense stat. Increasing your defense does not reduce fire damage, as defense is focused on reducing physical damage only. So what you need to focus on to try and counter the Witch King is reducing either this early round damage or countering fire damage, or ideally both. So what strategies or tactics do we have available to us that can help deal with this Witch King? The first of these is equipping your commander with an item called the Superior Hauberk, specifically with the Fire Protection buff. Now the Superior Hauberk stats itself don't help too much, they give boosted might and also army defence, of course that defence itself doesn't help with the fire damage. However, what that fire protection can give you is up to 60% reduced burn damage depending on your level of refinement. Obviously, this is an absolutely massive usefulness as getting that damage down is the key part of countering the Witch King. So a fire protection chest is probably the most important item to have when facing off against a Witch King. Alternatively, there are some items such as the Ranger's Shroud or the High Elf Hauberk which can also carry the Resistance buff. What resistance grants you is a reduction to burn, poison and focus damage, though this can only be increased to 30% at max refinement, and as these items are of exquisite rarity, they're a lot harder to get and refine. So I'd recommend going for the fire protection chest instead, but if you're lucky enough to have a fully refined resistance chest, this can also help deal with that damage, though to a lesser effect. The second useful item, if looking to specifically target the Witch King, is to use either a Horseman's Helm, with warding, or alternatively use something like the Cask of the Submerged Isle or the Hunter's Guide with a high refined Aegis. Of course the preference would be to use Aegis, but again this is an exquisite rarity item, but it provides uh, up to four rounds worth of resistance to stun, uh, up to 100% once at full refinement. So this completely counters the stun provided by Nazgul Screech. Alternatively, a more available item is the Horseman's Helm. With the warding effect, if you fully refine it, it gives you a 100% chance to be immune to stun for only the first two rounds. But of course, this two, first two rounds is where it's most key, as the Nazgul Screech stun is only inflicted in the first round. Lastly, a pretty niche item, but nonetheless very effective, is actually to use a full helm with the effect called Blinding Barrier. Now, Blinding Barrier only affects the Tier 2 Cataphract unit, called the Knight, but what this does is this reduces their Focus, Burn and Poison damage by 60%. This can be quite effective when you have a strong high damage commander and use him to specifically target Witch King, because you can just use a mono stack of the Knights with Blinding Barrier and get that massively reduced fire damage. Now, using any of these items will massively improve your results against the Witch King, what can you do to further strengthen your advantage uh, by the means of what commander you use? So the first of these I'd recommend using is Gandalf the Grey. Now Gandalf the Grey is a commonly owned uh, good side commander as he's available in the first premium chest in season 1. If you have him up to rank five, uh, respect 5 or above, you gain access to the White Council tree. Now while White Council itself isn't particularly strong against the Witch King, what it does give you access to is High Alert. So High Alert can give your allied units Focus, Burn and Poison Damage received buff by reducing it by 50%. This is massive, again similar to those Fire Resistance or Resistance Chests. If you think, if you use those two in combination, you almost completely nullify the Witch King's ability to deal fire damage. The second Respect 5 sub-skill, Champion of Light, can also increase your damage against Orcs, Urukai, and Trolls, so you can increase the amount of damage you're dealing to these Alchemists to get rid of as many as possible as soon as possible. On top of this, Gandalf the Grey also has access to one of the Witch King's most powerful skills, which is Convener. So he also gains initiative, meaning that as long as he's higher speed uh, than the Witch King, his, uh, his units will therefore act before the Alchemists, so you can get some of those Alchemists killed before they deal damage. On top of that, you can also hit follow-up and get two attacks per round, exactly the same as him. 
And lastly, his skill wizard can also benefit by having a similar effect to Nazgul Screech. The wizard affects in round one, exactly the same as Nazgul Screech, and inflicts a stun as well. So you have the chance to stun those alchemists, to stop them dead, stop them hitting that early, uh, early burst damage, and just massively improving your odds in the fight. As far as Witch King counters go, Gandalf the Grey is probably up there as either the best or one of the best. The second great commander to use against the Witch King is Dwalin. So again, you need to have your Dwalin at respect 5 to unlock the necessary skill tree. However, when he does reach that, you gain access to Warrior of the Lonely Mountain. Now, Warrior of the Lonely Mountain itself wouldn't look like it helps too much as it reduces physical damage. However, once you've put 15 skill points and maximised this skill, your army gains a burn damage received buff of minus 50%. So you can also, similar to High Alert, massively reduce the amount of burn damage you take. Additionally, as Nazgul Screech only targets two of your units, not the commander itself, Nazgul Screech doesn't reduce the damage of your primary damage dealer, Dwalin himself. As Dwalin is the one dealing the damage, you almost completely avoid this stun. It only doesn't matter too much if you'll reduce damage from your units, as your units are essentially just there to be tanks and to soak up the damage. Lastly, Dwalin can also make very strong use of the Dwarven units, particularly the Guardian, or also the Depth Defender. Both of these units are very, very strong against evil side. The Guardian itself has a skill that can reduce burn damage by up to 20%, which of course, when combined then with Dwalin's skill and also a fire protection chest, almost completely nullifies burn damage. And the Depth Defenders themselves are actually a bit more of an offensive option, as if you use those, when they get hit by burn damage, they actually switch over and instead their damage changes to, you, to inflict burn damage themselves. So you can almost flip the tables back on a Witch King and hit them with high amounts of burn damage each round. Additionally, when hit with burn damage, they get an enormous damage buff of 50%. So these are amazing against enemy units. Please note that Depth Defenders, of course, are only late season units. I believe they come in in Season 5 Tactics Evolve onwards. So if you don't have these in your season, that's why. Next up, counter-wise, definitely comes Gil-Galad. Now, Gil-Galad is brilliant for taking out uh, Witch Kings. However, only if that Witch King is not using a Pursuit accessory, uh, say, such as the Planteer of Orthanc with Tactical Mark. So make sure, if you can, to just be aware of that and, and try and avoid any that do have Pursuit. Uh, now, the reason that Gil-Galad is so strong against Witch Kings is this skill tree here, Kingly Kin. So what Kingly Kin gives you is, for the first two rounds, your Elves have a 70% chance to avoid all damage. Of course, that pairs perfectly uh, with against the Witch King's Convener, because he's dealing the majority of his damage in the first two rounds. So you have a similar chance to evade all of that damage in the first two rounds. If you can evade his massive burst damage in the first few rounds, then you're in a brilliant place to take him out after that. On, in addition to that, Gilgalad also has the White Council skill tree, so you have the option to take High Alert uh, and also Champion of Light, particularly at high respect so that you can then deal bonus damage and take less burn damage for the remainder of the fight after that first two rounds. After that, each round your elves also get a 25% chance to gain follow-up as well, so your elves every single round have an opportunity to hit twice, so you can just deal massive amounts of damage to the Witch King. Essentially, Gilgalad does to Witch King what Witch King does to everyone else, unless the Witch King has a Pursuit, so keep an eye out for that. My last recommended counter, commander-wise, to the Witch King is actually going to be Isildur, but also to a lesser extent, strangely, Frodo and Sam. The reason for this is both of these units are very, very strong at inflicting madness. Isildur obviously is the particular recommendation as he's not just good at inflicting madness, he can also do massive damage and buff his army as well. The reason I'd say these aren't quite as good, or at least as consistent as the other two, as both of these rely on Madness, which therefore has a slight randomness to it. So Madness itself, once inflicted on the enemy units, only has a 50% chance of procking, and if it does proc, it means that their unit will attack their other own units, so make them inflict damage on themselves. Now Madness on these units can be particularly good, because if you inflict Madness on the opposing Alchemist, obviously there's a little bit of randomness there to make sure you do hit the Alchemist, but also, if the Alchemist, you get that proc, and the Alchemist hits 
the Witch King's own other units, you don't only stop yourself from taking that huge amount of early round damage from the Alchemists, but it's also dealt to their own units, so they just burn away all other tanks in the army, leaving only the squishy Alchemist behind for you to easily take out. As I said, Madness is a bit random, so don't expect it to be as consistent as the first few recommendations, but of course, once it do if it does work, it can be extremely, extremely effective. And on that note, I think that's everything I have to say about my recommendations for countering the Witch King. I really hope you've enjoyed, and I hope you're looking forward to the rest of this series. I will be covering other evil commanders and specific ways to counter them. If you have enjoyed, please consider clicking the recommended video at the end to see some more of my, uh, my guides, and please consider hitting the like and sub button so you can see what more I have to produce in the future. If you do, I really hope to see you on the next one.